Have you ever wondered what it would be like to just float? To push a button and watch everything in the room gently lift off the ground? It's a question that feels like it belongs in a science fiction movie, a wild dream from the mind of a child. Yet it's a question that has captivated some of the most brilliant minds in history. Can we block gravity? Can we build a shield, a device, or a material that simply tells gravity, not here, not today? It seems like such a simple idea. We can block light with our hands. Imagine the possibilities if we could. We could build spacecraft that lift off Earth with almost no effort at all. We could construct buildings that seem to defy the very laws of physics, floating serenely in the sky. We could revolutionize transportation, making heavy loads feel as light as a feather. The belief that we might be able to block gravity isn't born from pure fantasy. It actually comes from our experiences with other forces of nature. Think about electricity. We can stop its flow with an insulator like rubber or plastic. Or consider magnetism, which is perhaps the best analogy. We've all played with magnets as children. You can feel that invisible push and pull. You can see one magnet repel another, seemingly defying gravity as it hovers in midair. You can also shield a magnet's pull. A simple sheet of iron placed between a magnet and a paperclip will effectively block the magnetic field. While inventors tinkered in their labs, it was a writer who truly launched the idea of gravity shielding into the global consciousness. In his 1901 novel, The First Men in the Moon, H.G. Wells gave the dream a name, Cavorite. By painting shutters on a spherical spaceship with Cavorite, he and his companion could open and close them to control their ascent. Part of the reason the idea of gravity shielding has such a strong grip on our minds is that gravity itself feels so simple. It just pulls things down. That's it. Unlike electromagnetism, with its complex rules of attraction and repulsion, its fields and waves, gravity seems one-dimensional. This apparent simplicity is deceptive. We picture it as invisible lines stretching from the earth to an object, and we think, why can't we just cut those lines? This intuitive model, while useful for navigating our daily lives, is fundamentally wrong. It encourages us to think of gravity as an active force that is emitted by objects, much like light is emitted from a light bulb. The problem is that gravity doesn't work that way. There are no gravitational rays to block. Every single particle of matter in an object exerts a gravitational pull on every single particle in another object. To shield an apple from the Earth's gravity, you would need to stop the pull from every atom inside the Earth. Placing a sheet of material between the apple and the ground doesn't stop the atoms deep in the Earth's core from pulling on the apple. The next great leap in understanding came in the early 20th century from Albert Einstein. He wasn't trying to find a way to block gravity. He was actually trying to reconcile Newton's theory with his own new theory of special relativity. He realized that the two were, well, incompatible. Newton's gravity acted instantaneously, but Einstein had shown that nothing, not even information, could travel faster than the speed of light. This contradiction led Einstein on a decade-long intellectual journey that culminated in his theory of general relativity in 1915. Einstein's genius was to propose that gravity is not a force at all. Instead, he said, gravity is the effect of mass and energy curving the very fabric of the universe, a four-dimensional fabric he called space-time. Imagine a stretched-out rubber sheet. If you place a heavy bowling ball in the center, the sheet will bend and warp. Now, if you roll a small marble nearby, it won't be pulled toward the bowling ball by a mysterious force. Instead, it will simply follow the curve in the rubber sheet created by the bowling ball's weight. This, Einstein said, is what gravity is. The Earth isn't pulling you down, it is warping the space-time around you, and you are simply moving through that warped geometry. This new picture of gravity is profoundly beautiful, but it delivers the final, definitive blow to the idea of gravity shielding. If gravity is not a force traveling through space, but is instead the shape of space itself, what would you be blocking? Shielding gravity would be like trying to flatten the curve in the rubber sheet by holding a small, flat piece of cardboard over it. The cardboard doesn't remove the giant depression caused by the bowling ball. Long before the grand theories of Einstein, in the age of Newton, scientists began to conduct simple but elegant experiments to test the fundamental nature of gravity. They wanted to know if its pull could be altered or impeded. A typical experiment, conducted by physicists like Austin and Thwing in 1897, 
involved building a massive shield out of lead bricks. They would meticulously measure the gravitational pull on a test mass using pendulums or torsion balances, devices sensitive enough to detect minute gravitational forces. Again and again the results were the same. Nothing happened. The pendulum continued its swing, and the torsion balance remained stubbornly unmoved. The massive shields, whether made of lead, iron or water, had absolutely no effect on the gravitational force passing through them. The pull of gravity was measured to be exactly the same with or without the shield in place. These null results were profoundly important. While they may seem like failures, in science, a definitive no is often as valuable as a yes. In the 1990s, the story took a dramatic and controversial turn with the work of a Russian materials scientist named Eugene Podklitnov. Podklitnov's experiment involved a rapidly spinning superconducting ceramic disc, cooled to incredibly low temperatures with liquid nitrogen. He reported that objects placed above this spinning disc showed a small but consistent reduction in their weight, somewhere between 1.5% and 2%. Major research organizations, including NASA, took an interest and attempted to replicate Podkletnov's results. They assembled similar, and in some cases more advanced, versions of his experiment. After years of effort and multiple independent attempts, the verdict was clear. No one could replicate his findings. The experiments at NASA and other institutions found no evidence of any weight reduction whatsoever. While Podklitnov himself stood by his results, the consensus in the scientific community was that the original observation was likely an experimental artifact. Beyond the mind-bending geometry of space-time, there is another, equally fundamental reason why gravity shields are a physicist nightmare. They violate one of the most sacred laws in the entire universe. This is the law of conservation of energy. This law states that energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be changed from one form to another a gravity shield would break it completely. Imagine you have a one kilogram weight and a gravity shield. You lift the weight one meter off the ground. This requires a certain amount of energy which is now stored in the weight as potential energy. Now, you slide your gravity shield underneath it. Suddenly, the weight becomes weightless. The potential energy it had has vanished into thin air. Energy has been destroyed. By simply moving a sheet of material back and forth, you could create a machine that generates limitless energy from nothing. If a gravity shield could exist, you could build a water wheel that is shielded on one side. This would solve the world's energy problems overnight, but it would also mean that the fundamental rulebook of the universe is wrong. So, is the case completely closed? Is there absolutely no hope, no theoretical loophole, that might one day allow us to manipulate gravity? Well, physics is a wonderfully strange field. And there is one exotic idea that keeps the dream alive, negative mass. Remember that the reason we cannot shield gravity is that mass only comes in one flavor, positive. It only attracts. But what if there was another kind of mass, a negative mass, that repelled positive mass? The problem, of course, is that we have absolutely no evidence that negative mass exists. Every single particle we have ever discovered, from the tiniest electron to the largest galaxy cluster, has positive mass. Even though Einstein's theory of general relativity gives us a clear reason why gravity shielding is impossible, it's important to remember that it might not be the final word on gravity. For general relativity, those edges are found in the most extreme places in the cosmos, at the heart of a black hole and at the very beginning of the universe, the moment of the Big Bang. These are points where our current understanding of physics simply breaks down completely. The word infinity is a huge red flag for physicists. It doesn't usually describe a physical reality. It signals that the theory itself has been pushed beyond its limits. It means our map has run out. This tells us that as brilliant and successful as general relativity is for describing planets, stars, and galaxies, it is an incomplete picture of reality. One of the greatest unsolved puzzles in all of science is the disconnect between our two best theories of the universe. We have general relativity, Einstein's theory of the very large, which describes gravity, planets, stars, and the shape of space-time, with breathtaking accuracy. Then we have quantum mechanics, the theory of the very small, which governs the bizarre world of atoms and subatomic particles with equal success. The problem is, they don't agree with each other. 
Finding this theory is the holy grail of modern theoretical physics, leading to incredible, but as yet unproven ideas, like string theory and loop quantum gravity. When we look at galaxies, we can measure how fast they spin. Based on all the stars and gas we can see, the outer stars should be moving much slower than the inner stars. But that's not what we observe. Galaxies are spinning so fast that they should be flying apart. It's as if some invisible massive substance is providing extra gravitational pull. Scientists have named this mysterious substance dark matter. In the late 1990s, astronomers studying distant supernovae made an even more shocking discovery. They found that the expansion of the universe is not slowing down as everyone expected. Instead, the expansion is accelerating. So after our journey through history, physics, and the farthest reaches of the cosmos, we arrive back at our original question, can we block gravity? The answer, according to the sum of our scientific knowledge, is a clear and resounding no. It is not that we haven't been clever enough or that we are missing a special material. The very nature of gravity, as revealed by Albert Einstein, makes the idea of a simple shield impossible. Gravity is not a force that travels through space, but the very shape of space itself. You cannot block a landscape. You can only travel across it. This is a profound and beautiful truth, far more elegant than any science fiction device. But this definitive no should not feel like a disappointment. It is not an end to the story, but the beginning of a deeper appreciation for the universe we inhabit. And so, we look up at the night sky, at the moon held in its perfect orbit, and the distant galaxies spinning in the dark with a new perspective. We cannot switch off their pull, but we can understand it. We can predict its effects with stunning accuracy, and even use that knowledge to explore the solar system. The enduring question therefore shifts. It is no longer how can we block gravity, but what else can gravity teach us? The next great revolution in physics may be just around the corner, waiting for a new generation of curious minds to ask the next impossible question. The truth about gravity is that its greatest secret may be its ability to constantly remind us how much more there is to learn and how magnificent the journey of discovery can be. The pull of gravity, in the end, is matched only by the unending pull of wonder that it inspires.